Hi everybody, it's Tessa from Meyer Hatchery. Today I'm not showing you any of my chickens, we're going to be painting one. So I'm making a canvas to go in my coop that's going to highlight one of my favorite chickens. And we're going to do it step by step so that you can paint along at home. Before we get started painting today, I want to show you a little bit about the brushes that I'm using. And you can see I've already done stuff to my canvas to get prepared. So the first thing that I did was that I covered the back with some white acrylic paint just to give it a nice prime in the background so that it wasn't bare wood. When I did that, I used my 3 4 inch brush. Now when you look at this brush, it's wider. It has a flat top, so it's good for two things. Number one, it's good for coverage. Longer brush strokes are going to give you a smoother paint feel to work with. But I did use it for something else too. Instead of using my brush like this, I actually turned it onto its side to create these lines. And you can see, I didn't measure beforehand. I didn't take time to plot it out. This is just my background, so it's not as important to me for it to be perfect. If you wanted to showcase that background along with your chicken, I suggest using a ruler to map out what you'd like. Simple combinations of lines and dots or swirls can be a nice addition to the background so that you don't just have something plain back there. When it was time for me to paint the dots, I used a round brush. Now this is a number 11 round brush, so it's bigger, but you can see the tip of the brush is rounded. It's got a nice point to it. And I was able to add all of these smaller details. This is the brush that I'm gonna be using when I'm actually painting my chicken. And I have this in a couple of different sizes. I've also got my paint ready. So on my palette, it's kind of hard to see, but I've got different tones of brown, I've got red for the comb, I've got yellow for highlights, I've also got black and white so I can create tones and shades on our chicken to make it look more realistic, and I've got a little green because we're going to be adding a flower in the mouth of the chicken. So gather your supplies, get in front of a nice cozy spot with your painting and your paintbrush, and let's get started. Alright, it's time to get started. One of the most important things when we're starting a painting is visualizing where our painting is going to take up space on our canvas. So when you're painting a chicken, you're going to have something that has a smaller head but a larger body. So we need to position it correctly so that we don't have just one small corner or a big giant body and then a tiny head. We want to make sure our proportions are right. So I'm going to be using um, a light gray color just to kind of plot out where my chicken is going to be. And I want to remind everybody that all of our paintings are going to look completely different. And that is fantastic. You don't want yours to look exactly like mine. If it did, I would think maybe you're a robot. And I don't think you are. So let's go. Now, when I'm painting, I'm going to do a quick outline with some neutral toned paint. So I know that I want the head of my bird to be in this area. So I am just going to plot out kind of like an oval shape here. I'm not going to fill it in all the way because this is just so that it will guide me. Now there's going to be waddles that come down this way, but I'm going to keep continuing the neck going down, forming into that body or the breast of the chicken. And I'm going to do the same thing with their back so that we have the neck and shape of the body. Then I'm going to kind of look at it and see, do I need to make this a little bit thicker? Do I need to make it a little bit thinner? It's always best to do it as small as possible first and then work up on it. So if I look here, I'm going to have a, a comb that comes up the top. I'm going to have their beak. There's going to be a flower that comes down, waddles right here. I think I'm good. Now you're going to notice that I don't wash my paintbrush. It's a habit that I have. Some people like to wash in between colors. I just use the color until it's gone off my brush for the most part. And since we're painting a chicken and they have a million different colored feathers, I'm not going to worry if there's so much, a little bit of paint on my brush between changing colors. If you do like to wash your paintbrush though, make sure that after you wash it with water, you really well get all that water out so that you don't end up with transparent colors. All right, now, We've got this in place. Let's start working on some feathering. So I'm going to be doing darker colored feathers down near the bottom 
And then as we go up the head, those feathers are going to turn to be a lighter color. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to start at the bottom. Because if you think about how the feathers are, they overlay each other like this. So it's one layer over the other. So that's how I'm going to start. And as I go, you'll see I'm constantly dipping in paint and going back up. Don't be afraid of the paint. If your brush starts to go dry, add more. There's no reason not to. That paint is there to help. So I'm going to start at the bottom with some black and some dark brown on my brush. And I'm just going to start giving some color down to this bottom. It's important that down here um, I am completely covering over my background because I don't want to be able to see that back there. So when I'm painting my chicken, um, especially when we start using some of the lighter colors, just be sure that you're getting enough paint on to cover up your background if you've painted one. So I'm just going to start with this black down through here and right now, yes, it does just look like the bottom of our chicken is pure black. But that's because I'm going to add in more colors as we go. And again, see how it got a little bit um, dry there? Didn't have enough paint on my brush. So I'm going to take the black paint up to about here. And then I'm going to switch over into some browns. So I've got a dark brown. And what I'm going to do is with my round brush, I'm going to start adding in little streaks of that brown color. So since my chicken is like um, kind of an ombre, an ombre of browns. So I'm going to have browns in here that look like speckles almost. And then once I do that, I'm going to start moving upwards with just the brown. Another note too is that if you see you have a gob of paint, like let's say I go like this and then I end up with a blub right there, paint through it. Even if that means scraping it off, putting it back onto your palette to get rid of some of that paint, do it. Because those bumps, especially if you're using a satin or um, a shiny glossy paint, you'll be able to see those from far away. And even though um, I want to highlight the chicken, I don't want to highlight some of those errors that I may have made. So as I move up, I'm just going to be looking to make sure I've got coverage. So I can see here that yes I do, I'm going all the way to the bottom of my painting. And I've got this nice brown. Now without washing my brush, I'm going to switch over to a lighter color of brown. Now if you don't have acrylic paint in those colors already, it's really easy to mix. Using white you can change the, the shade of your brown. So you're going to take it from a dark brown to a light brown. Sometimes I add in a little bit of yellow. It gives it a nice tint. So if I add that, I've got a next layer of feathers coming in here. And you can kind of see it almost kind of looks like an eagle to be honest. Um, as I'm painting and that's okay. I know that I'm going to be able to go back through later and change it if I need to. So when I'm painting with this new color of brown and adding in that yellow, I am not blending it. Blending can be wonderful for certain things. If I wanted to create a sunset and I wanted to be able to see the colors fade into the sky, I would blend all day long until I got that right. But last time you looked at your chicken, was it perfectly blended? No. There's colors all over in their feathers. Even some that look like they shouldn't even be there because of their iridescence. So don't worry about blending. If you look at it and you've over blended and created a new color, just add a new layer on top. There's no rules that say how many times you can go over top of your painting. It's a matter of just looking and being aware, stepping back, looking again, and making sure you've got it right. So I'm moving up as I go. I've got uh, this next lighter color of brown. On my next go, I'm gonna put more yellow on because I'm gonna start trying to fade this into a white gray. This is gonna look like um, a leghorn, a light brown leghorn. So in here, I'm getting a little bit more of just yellow, just yellow with a little bit of brown. And because I'm not washing my brush, I'm getting that nice streaky color. But now it's time for me to kind of change because in those leghorns, in their top feathers, they've got a nice layer of yellow, but there's also some black, some browns, and some white. So I'm going to transition from just using yellow to using like a cream with my unwashed brush. And when I do that, it's going to start to look a little bit 
again like an eagle. But um, I don't want to over blend. I'm just going to gently pull some of that color down with my brush and move my way up the head. And then we're going to go back into it later with more details to get the coloring and the feathers right. One thing I do want to check for again is coverage when we start to move into these lighter colors. I can see some of my wallpaper peeking through my chicken and he's not transparent. So let's get more coverage in there. I can see some of my lines from when I first made my um, marks for my chicken. I'm not going to worry about it. This isn't the kind of painting where I'm looking for precision. I'm looking for love, which is the most best awesome way to make your painting. So let me get more of this lighter color on my brush. Add some of that in up top. Again, not over blending. We can always go over top of it if we need to. While I get up to the top of their head, I'm going to make it as light as I can. So I'm actually going to take cream, but I'm also going to add in some white. Just up here at the top, right by the comb and the eye. That'll help with some contrast. Alright, I'm going to draw some of that down farther. Add a little bit of white down in here because you know it does ombre down. Take a look. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a nice dark base. I've got a nice brown center with some yellows and then I've got a cream head. I can't see through it. I'm happy with my lines. I might have to wash my brush. Let's take a break, because when we come back, we're gonna be painting the comb and the waddles with some red and adding some highlights so that it looks more realistic. All right, we're back. It's time to add some details. We've got a nice base for our chicken, but we need to add things like the earlobes, the eyes, the area around their eyes, their waddles and their comb, um, along with their beak. Oh my gosh, I can't forget the beak. So I'm gonna start with the waddles and the mask area that goes around their eyes. Um, I'm gonna change up my brush from my larger 11 size round brush. I'm gonna go down to a size six, um, just so I can add a little bit more detail and I'll have a little bit more control. So when I do this, I'm going to use just straight red. We're going to play with it a little bit as it dries so that we can add shade and highlight. Um, but so, because I don't want to alter that main color, I'm going to use just straight, regular red. Um, now, Leghorns usually have some of the larger waddles and combs. If you're painting your own chicken at home, you've chosen different colors, and you are not going to paint their waddles and combs, feel free to make it the size of your chicken. This is completely your design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here near where my beak is going to be, and I'm going to just draw on with my paintbrush where I think the waddles should be. So they're going to come down almost to like a raindrop from the bottom of the neck. Now, red is a really transparent color and so I can see through it even though I'm painting with full coverage and I don't want to be able to see that line in the background. So there's a trick that I can use for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a small amount of white in with this. We don't want to add too much or it's going to make it paint. But if by adding just a small amount of white in with the red, it gives it a little bit more thickness and it makes it so that we can't see that background anymore. And it doesn't really look pink. It's just a nice shade of red. So um, we want to make this look as realistic as possible. So a chicken doesn't just have one waddle that comes down, there are two. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this second one kind of off to the side. It's going to come down and balloon like right there. Almost looks like a lump coming off the side of this one that I first painted. Um, and on my chickens, I like to add that um, color that comes there around their eyes that's part of their skin. So I'm actually going to take this up onto part of the face. And I'm gonna go up pretty high. And again, you'll see I haven't washed my brush. I haven't added more paint. I'm just kind of dragging that paint around so that I don't end up with a ton of little blobs. But I'm gonna bring that like face mask area up. 
and I'm going to extend it almost over to where their earlobe is going to be. All right, let's take a look. Do I have enough on there? Not quite yet. I'm going to load up with a little bit more red just to get it up a little bit higher. Come down a little bit more. There we go. Now, while this paint is wet, it's important that we do this now because if we wait too long and it dries, we won't be able to mix and get that nice shade and tone. So I'm going to start with my um, shadows. So I'm going to be putting a little bit of black and a little bit of brown on my brush so it's not very harsh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the line here between these two combs and I'm going to paint down and separate them. So all I've done is created that line. Uh, so that I know which waddle is which. Now without washing my brush, I'm going to dip it back into the red. And now on this um, waddle that's in the background, I am going to use that to shade it. Um, make sure you don't have too much of that black left on your brush. You can brush it off down here and then come up in with some red just to make this one a darker color. That tells our eye, hey, that one's in the background. That one's not near us. That one uh, is going to be farther back and that's a good way of being able to show that dimension without like drawing lines on it. I'm also going to have some um, shadow here on the edge just to give it nice pop so it separates it from the background. So now I have one darker waddle in the back. I also want there to be a separation between the waddles and the, the skin on the face. So I'm going to take a little bit more of that brown and black just on the tip of my brush and I'm going to create like an arc here. Now this arc is like where the beak is. You can see I've kind of made it dark so I'm going to wipe off my brush and get some more red because I don't want it to be that dark. It's okay if it's a little bit dark but it doesn't need to be that dark. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling the paint down. So when I pull that paint down that helps it look like a, a real shadow. If I um, just kind of swirled it around, it wouldn't necessarily look real. So I'm gonna, just gonna keep getting more red, pulling it down so that I'm hiding some of that shadow that I created. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Now, along with the white, I'm gonna get a tiny bit of yellow just so that it turns into more of an orangey red than a pink red. And now I'm going to create some highlights on the front of this wild. So I want the first highlight to be down near the bottom. And I already can tell that I've added way too much. So I'm going to brush off here on my plate, grab just the tiniest bit of white, and go back on it, and add in a highlight down here at the bottom of the wild. Grab a little bit more red so that I can blend it in with my shadow from up above. And we've got a nice highlight. I'm happy with that. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny, tiny little glimmer of white, almost like a, you'd see I'm like a shiny apple. I'm going to add just a little bit of one right here, or glisten in the eye, just to make it a little bit more highlight -y. Okay, perfect. Now, um, since I have white on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and add in the earlobe, which is going to be over here. And since that red is still wet, I'm going to want to make sure that I have a lot of paint on my brush. If I have too little paint on my brush right now, it's not going to create an earlobe. It's going to create a big pink glob, which I don't want. So I'm going to wash off my brush. Or not wash off, scrape off. And then I'm going to smooth out this area just a little bit here so it's not so harsh. All right, we've got an earlobe. We've got waddles. It's looking good. I think it's time for the comb. We've already got red on there. Light runs have that huge comb on top. So I'm gonna start down here, right by the mask area, and I'm going to whoosh, bring it up, almost like a horn that comes up. And then I'm gonna decide, okay, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna draw one on this side. So now it actually does look like horns. And we all know as chicken owners, there are days when our chickens do appear as if they have horns because they're being naughty. So um, this one we're just going to pretend like it's having a naughty day. All right, so 
I've got a little bit of the comb here. I'm going to come down, make it into a point. I'm going to make another point, and I'm going to keep going back. I'm going to add probably five or six points. This back one's going to be biggest. Um, and this is just a quick rough sketch for myself here with my paintbrush. Take a look at it, make sure I like that placement. I think that's good. And I'm going to color it in. And again, we're going with red right over our background so I can see through to my background wallpaper. I'm going to add a tiny bit of that white just to make it so you can't see through. It doesn't change it too much. see that it is a little bit pink, but it's not so pink that it's like Pepto-Bismol pink. Oop, that was a little bit too much. See that? I got too much white on there. I'm just going to curl it off my brush and grab just red. And if I grab just red, it'll blend in so I don't have to worry about it. That up there, cover that up. Here, cover these. Maybe not as big as my Leghorn's actual comb, but it's pretty close. And I don't want to go too far up the painting and have the comb touch the top. I think this is a good height, even though it's maybe not so accurate to um, my Leghorn's actual comb. It's still good. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the comb that I did on the waddles. So I'm going to start with the um, shadow with a little bit of black, a little bit of brown. I'm going to add shadow back here along the back of the comb. I'm going to add some here where it meets the top of the head. And I'm going to add a little bit here in the front. So now that I've got a rough sketch of where that is, I'm going to go back, get more red on my brush and maybe a little bit of brown so that I can blend that in and it's not so harsh. Because over here, look, I got a lot of black. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush as much as I can on my plate. Get more red, there we go. And I'm gonna spread it around. Spread, spread, spread. And again, I'm not mixing this so that you can't see my brush strokes. I think one of the nicest things about a painting made at home is that you can see the brush strokes. It was important in a lot of painters from you know the 1800s to be able to see that brush stroke. It's kind of a new concept to be really, really precise um, or most photo quality. I want people to know that I painted this when they look at it in my coupe. So it's okay with me if they can see my brush strokes. All right, I've added in my shadow. Now, highlights. And we won't have as much highlight on the comb so I'm just going to do a tiny bit of white and again a tiny bit of yellow and I'm just going to go through here and maybe add just a tiny bit of highlight here by this part of the comb and here right in the front of these just so we have some contrast. Hey, that looks great. Now, I'm going to use a napkin to wipe off my brush really quick because we need to draw the eye. So when you're drawing an eye, it's best to start small. We're going to add a highlight on it afterwards. So we're going to be just using like a, a, a black and a dark brown to make the eye. You're welcome to make it whatever color eye your chicken has, but I'm doing this just for ease of um, coloring. So the eye is going to be positioned inside this mask. So I'm going to start small and then kind of look and make sure that that's in a good spot for me. And I think it is. So I'm just going to kind of football out that shape so that it's not perfectly circle. Kind of bend the edges. Because even though their eyeball is round inside, they still have a shape similar to ours. There we go. So I've got a nice eye shape and I'm just going to leave it for now because I want to add a highlight to it, but that's too wet for me to do it. It'll turn into gray and it'll look funny. All right, let's add a beak. 
So my leghorns have a yellowish colored beak, so I'm going to be using yellow. I am going to add a little bit of white to it so that I have good coverage when I paint it on here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint a beak that comes off the front of my chicken. The top beak curves down, and the bottom beak kind of goes straight out. So I want to make sure that I've got the right shape so that it doesn't look like their beak is like a banana hanging off their face. So I've got a straight bottom beak, top beak curves down. And um, I can see through it, I've got to add some more white. White, white, white. Add that in. And you don't even have to mix it that much. It kind of almost makes a highlight if you need it. Leave it. Okay. How do I look here? Oh, we're looking good. I gotta connect this a little bit more to the waddles. Kind of look like the beak is floating off into the distance. I don't really want that. Alright. Now while I have a little of this yellow on my brush, instead of wiping it off, I'm just going to go back through um, my feathers and add some little marks that will um, just accent, add a little bit more color. This is an alternative to washing off my brush. I guess I could wash off my brush, but I like to do this better. Alright, we're going to give this a second to dry and we're going to add our fi final finishing touches. Are you ready to finish this up? Let's get started. Alright, so I want it to look like my chicken is holding a tulip or any kind of flower out of the mouth. Tulip is easy because the petals go up like that, so when it's dangling down, I just have to draw the petals. If you had something like a sunflower and you were trying to do that, it would be more difficult to do. This hasn't been a difficult painting. I don't want to challenge myself and draw the attention away from the chicken. So I'm going to stick with the tulip. Plus, it's the, the time of year for tulips. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, bringing out a stem. So I'm going to switch over to an even smaller round brush, which that one's not good enough. i got to find an even smaller one. Here we go. A number three. A number three round brush is good for this. Uh, you could use the same brush for the whole thing if you wanted to. Um, I like changing out so I have more control, but I have done an entire painting with one single size 6 brush. So whatever you have on hand is good enough. So I'm going to mix in a tiny bit of dark brown with my green. And I'm actually, for the first time, I'm going to mix it onto my plate instead of mixing it while I paint. And that's just so that I have consistency in color. And so I make sure I get the right color. So I've got green, I've added a little bit of the dark brown, making it almost an olive color because I don't want this to be the center of attraction. That chicken, that's the most important part. So um, this stem is going to be coming from the beak. It's going to go actually, we're going to take it from the bottom and don't worry too much about this if it's wrinkly, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to just draw this down whoop, like that. Now it looks kind of weird, it looks like a green worm shooting out of the chicken's mouth. Don't worry, this is the back. I'm going to actually add just a tiny little bit of green right there so that when we go through and add the details on the beak, it'll look like it's being held there. That's all the green I have to use. So I'm going to wipe off my brush, and then I'm going to form the petals. I'm going to start with the petals in the back. So I'm going to be using a combination for this. Um, I think I'm going to do an orangey-yellow tulip just because it'll be nice alongside my leghorn. So I'm going to get yellow on my brush when I get a whole big glob of it actually and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of red so that I have an orange color. And again I'm going to mix this on my plate. It's actually making a nice almost salmon uh, or a mustard color. So I'm going to form the back petals first. So we're going to cover over these so it's no big deal. But um, I'm going to come down with this shape of a tulip petal and I'm going to start with that. Things in the background darker than things in the foreground. So there's my first set of petal. Now without washing my brush I'm going to dip into a little bit of white and I'm going to bring out here a side petal that's a lighter color. 
And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I might have to dip into a little bit of yellow um, just to get it on there. But now I'm going to go out from the other side and bring down that side petal. These petals are on the top. I'm going to do one more in the front, yellow with white. And this is going to cover most of that one on the back. And that's what I want, so it's okay. I'm going to have it come down, come down. I want to still be able to see some of that in the background, but I don't want to see all of it. Now I need to check and make sure I can't see my background, which I can right here. So I'm going to go over it with a little bit more of that lighter colored um, yellow, yellowy orange. Curve that in a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more white and yellow because I can still see that background and I don't want that. There we go. There. So from up close, it doesn't really look like anything at all. It kind of just looks like a blob. But when you back up, you'll be able to see that it's a flower. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more of the yellow in there. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow with some red along this base here. What I'm doing, just like I did with the other ones, is I'm bringing it down. So I'm pulling that red down into the back. There, it almost kind of looks like a poppy. Now that I have this reddish yellow on my brush, I'm going to take it really fast and I'm going to create a light line of the beak. I might add a little bit of dark brown, a little bit of tan. So that we can see. Oh, hey, he's holding this. It's not magically floating out of his mouth. He's holding it. Now we've got a line there. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to use some white because now that black on our eye should be all dry. I'm going to add a little white of the eye on this side, like that. Wipe a little bit of that off. I got a little bit too much. Make sure my brush is nice and pointy. And I'm going to create a reflection mark in the eye. Right there. Oh, look how cute that is. If you wanted to, you could add more flowers down here. You could write something cute in a fun script like, Hello Spring, or Welcome Summer, or My Chickens Eat All of My Flowers. Any of these catchy phrases of things that chickens do for the time of year. But I kind of like mine as it is. I love that it focuses on the chicken. I like how the um, blue in the background is a great contrasting color in with my chicken. Uh, I think it's perfect for this season. It reminds me so much of my beautiful little leghorn. I'm really happy with my painting. And I can't wait to see yours. If you do go through step by step and paint your favorite chicken, send them to me. I'd love to see them. We can talk about our favorite chickens and how cute they are and how they're ruining our gardens together. So, after this is all dry, I'm going to take something like a Mod Podge and go over the top a clear um, matte varnish almost. That'll help protect the painting so that I can actually hang this up in my coop and I don't have to worry if I need to wash it. We want to create a barrier so that it can be washed. So that layer of Mod Podge will seal it in and it'll protect it. But make sure that it's all dry when you do. All right, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. I hope to paint along with you again sometime soon. Have a great day.